Shalom Saints, welcome back to another episode of The Upper Room where we loose and bind uh, biblical topics, subjects, current events, uh, you name it, we cover it and we always endeavour to try and put a biblical lens on uh, on every area we, we, we try to look at. Now, one of the challenges I find within the realms of podcasting uh, because every man and his dog has got a podcast these days, to be perfectly honest. It's a competitive market, even in the Christian sphere uh, of information. Uh, it's it's a tough nut to crack because so many people are, are replicating the same stories and giving the same ideas. And um, it can become a wash with uh, similar opinions and it's uh, it can be overkill, in, in my opinion. So for me, my challenge is to uh, replicate and have good, honest conversations uh, here on the show and have that degree of transparency with regards to where we find ourselves in in these times, uh, how we're to walk out our, our uh, discipleship under Yeshua Messiah uh, with everything else in between and to have honest dialogue uh, with with folks that are on the walk um, whether it be leadership, whether it be uh, people new to the faith, people with testimonies. And so it is, um, it is a challenge to uh, have uh, content that's worth watching, that's engaging. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's our aim here, is to actually help edify the body and help build it up. And part of the, uh, the, the risk, uh, as it were, is to have raw conversations where they're not necessarily the most prepared or are... Uh, you know, uh, people know exactly what's going to happen. And everyone loves citing the verse about the spirit interceding for them in a the moment when they don't know when to talk. But uh, sometimes you just really do have to do that for the, to give room for the spirit. And um, that's what we're doing today. And uh, I couldn't be in better company uh, for that. Or maybe I could because his wife has actually proven to be a pretty dab hand at this. So Joe Ringwood, no pressure. Shalom, sir. How are we? Shalom, bro. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Um, normally when I do this with Bex, uh, she might give me the title and we'll just rock with it and see what happens. And uh, today we don't even have that. I, I don't know what we're going to discuss. I don't know what we're going to go into. But again, as I mentioned at the top, that, that's part of the appeal I find is, of having these conversations and finding these pockets of truth. And uh, today, I, I think it'd be a good opportunity just to go through that with you because it's something we do uh, personally, and uh, sometimes there can be some real fruit. And to to share that and to bring that to an audience is uh, is pretty exciting. Yeah, bless you, bro. It's a privilege, and we we get that privilege to fellowship and communicate all the time, and it's a real blessing. So we we love sharing that with people online. We hope that it blesses you, and this is why we do this. It's uh, it's for, for people online, it's to feed the flock of Yah, and it's for the glory of thy name, O Yah. It's uh, it's not for our glory. And we want to invite you in. And sometimes it's good to just have that real talk about what's going on in the world, where we're at with things, uh, how we're currently viewing things from a messianic perspective with the, with the lens of Yeshua. Beautiful. And we've often spoke about how we cast the net, as it were, across the uh, the interweb of things. And um, th praise God for the Torah portions and praise God for the, the core content of what, what it is we do and uh, why we do what we do. Um, not just uh, for the sake of being online and, and that presence, but for what we do in, in, in our day-to-day -day ministries and whatnot. Um, part of the privilege of, of what we do here in the upper room, I think, seeing where it's come from and uh, where we are now, is uh yeah having that confidence to actually stretch out a bit and and to broaden the horizons in terms of um yeah the subjects and uh the things that would often typify you know torah observant kind of cliches it's it we're actually a lot more broader than that and i, I hope that that represents that this show represents that and um yeah as you said it's uh it's a chance to actually just um not um just just flesh through ideas and go through some some things that uh, we see day to day and what's close to our heart and um yeah so i'm really i'm really looking forward to to seeing what you what you want to bring today 
Yeah, bless you, bro. Yeshua said, didn't he, um, that you may be able to discern the skies uh, and say, lo, behold, it will be sunny tomorrow, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. And um, we are called to be watchmen on the wall. Right. Um, and I do think it's important that as we see these things fast approaching, that we do sound alarms, that we make people aware, um, that we that we wake people up. And of course, in the new age movement, waking people up is all, all about, you know, telling them about 9-11 or that it was an inside job or the banking scandals or the Masonic orders. And the that's a, that's a false light. Of course, we know it's a Luciferian light. The true definition of waking someone up is to bring them to the light of Yeshua. Amen. Um, that's how we wake people up. And as we see these things take place, we can put things into perspective very easily with the word of God because we've been foretold about it. And as we see things coming true and prophecy taking place, it's very easy for us then to sit back and relax and have great security because we've been told, so we've been pre-warned and these things must take place before the coming of the Son of Man. And then we can have faith then because the expectation is hey, we know these things have to take place before the end and uh, we understand that as we live in these times and we see these things unfold, that they just confirm the word of God and all the prophecies that are given and that is a, a great security and, and though they may be dark and, and heavy and, and there's, there's a lot of heavy things that have got to take place, even Yeshua said there is a tribulation coming that has never took place on this earth before nor will ever take place again we can have joy through that tribulation mm. um, because our master has told us this is what's going to happen and um, we can be prepared and be prepared to meet our maker and get ourselves ready as that, that that beautiful bride without spot or blemish. I think there's a beautiful spectrum between uh, in Thessalonians, Thessalonians where it talks about, you know, you should work with your hands, mind your own business, lead a quiet life. But then on the other hand, we're to expose the, the works of the darkness. And, and so I think we find ourselves in that, uh, particularly, as you said, with the responsibility of uh, <coughs> our watchmen, as it were, to to call a spade a spade, to be able to discern what's taking place. Because, as Yeshua said, there'll be many come in my name. You know, there's so much deception. And particularly, as you mentioned there, with the tr uh, the, the kind of so-called truth community and movement and as you say like Yeshua is the truth like he is literally the epicenter of it for me it's the, the ultimate metric so when you have people discussing um you know the uh, the uh the secret societies and the plans of uh, all these kind of uh they's and them's if if they don't have Yeshua in the mix somewhere uh that's where it's it becomes very uh difficult to uh, to to run with it, so yeah, we're we're to extrapolate to get in there, uh, particularly with current events when people do love to associate prophetic uh, elements to it, and um, yeah, to do that comes with a, with a degree of responsibility. But uh, as you said, ultimately, it's the the peace that surpasses understanding, right? So we're foretold these things. Uh, Yeshua sent us the Comforter. Uh, so it's not about being worried or scared, but um, maybe concerned and to keep an eye on things. But um, yeah, I think that's ultimately where a lot of peace comes from by staying in the word. Yeah, mom. Thanks, bro. Um, and I think it's about as well, highlighting the things, the trappings that people can fall into. There's many uh, wolves in sheep's clothing out there. There's many false prophets out there. Uh, there's false teachers and some of these um, who are now in the mainstream media, they're coming with this false light, you know, the the, the, the fake leaders, the, the, the wolves in sheep's clothing. And they're coming with a lot of truth, bro. They do come with a lot of truth. Um, you know, we see the, the Andrew Tates, the David Dykes, people like this. But as far as I'm concerned, a lot of these people who speak about the Matrix and... Uh, the, the true depths of reality and the secret societies and even even the reptilian agenda, for example, like that's not too far away from the truth because mm. the Bible speaks about how the B'nai Ha'elohim, a class of seraphim, 
Um, if we look at Hasatan in the garden, uh, is a seraphah, um, reptilian, serpentine in in characteristic. Uh, Leviathan, for example, again, serpentine in characteristic. If these went into the daughters of men, and then they produced the Nephilim. Um, well, then there is some type of genetic infiltration. And, of course, we understand that demonic possession can take place uh, and, and that bodies can become vessels for the spiritual. So we can see that these things are actually, they do have a root in, in a lot of truth. But again, then David I comes out with all this, but then, you know, he's took Yeshua out of the equation. Same with Andrew Treat, a huge pioneer in the truth exposing the matrix, the, uh, the Illuminati bloodlines, the financial sector, Big farmer, big tech, big brother. But then he's driving around in a Lamborghini with his top off, with a snake coiled around his body, mm. with his sunglasses on, smoking a cigar, worshipping Allah. And like you got so many young men who are looking to this man and they're, they're just double agents, bro. And and they don't even know that they're double agents and they make the best double agents, bro. The Mancurian candidate programmed to set up destruction from a spiritual place of thrones and principalities and... I think we, we have to make the body aware of these people. And I think that, of course, when someone speaks truth, truth is truth, and you can profit from that. But we have to be careful how far, um, how, how, well, how much permission we're giving these people to speak into our life. Because anything without Yeshua, anything without his Torah, you have to question it's, uh, how valid that is. Right, and we're in a really curious time when... Um the stakes have been raised to the point where if somebody is looking for, well, not looking, finding themselves in notoriety, uh, gaining a large following, chances are they're going to be having religious conversations at some point. And so we find ourselves now where a celebrity or somebody who has a, a, a large following or an influence then becomes, uh, uh, in the, in the, in, then finds themselves in the realm of teacher, you know, like Russell Brand being a, a prime example, you know, you have a, a religious experience, you know, and then before you know it, you've got X amount of people following it and you, you should by no means be in the position of teaching. And uh, I think you, you, you smashed it there with regards to, um, you know, the commandments and the Torah being at the heart of that as, a, as an anchor not to be swayed because I can't help but think a lot of these guys who talk a lot of truth, reveal a lot of things and who could well be, uh, making a way for others to come ultimately to J Jesus uh, one way or the other. Um, I think they're going to be easily swayed, bro, like when it comes to this ecumenical like merging of all the faiths. Like if you're not rooted in the word, you're not going to know your bum from your elbow and then you become swayed by every doctrine. So yeah. I think that's why it's so important. Like We can talk, we can talk, like we, we love having these conversations about reptilians and rabbit holes and all of these things which are have their time and place but if you're not rooted in the word in strong teaching um in this age of information as it were you can be and we've seen it that that good people become swayed so easily by these these wolves in sheep clothing precisely bro you get tossed to and fro by everyone the doctrine that you're going to end up shipwrecked you're going to end right. up shipwrecked um, and I think it's the Timothy sketch again. So as we see these things unfold and we say, oh, well, is, where's this in the word? Oh, wow. This is in Timothy, having a form of godliness, but denying the, the power, power thereof. Yeah. And this is what we see taking place. Like all of these people are getting spiritual now. All of them. Well, I'm not surprised because the scripture says the fool says in the heart there is no God. So that's a fact. So you're a fool if you say there's no God. You're just a fool. And people are beginning to see, oh, wow, this like atheist um, we come from nothing. I just believe in a big bang. Will you believe in something? It's like, it's. You, I can put more faith in the Lord of the Rings, bro. It's it's off. It's rockets. It's stupid. And the fool says in the heart, there is no God. So these people, they've all got to get spiritual in these latter days, bro. They've all got to get spiritual because the spiritual's got to increase, you know. Mm. Um. But again, well, what does the spirituality really look like? Where is the truth in that spirituality? We can't all say we've got the whole truth because your truth is different to my truth you know it's it's said that um there's a guy he's doing 50 on a freeway and and the police pull him up and they say hey you're breaking the law you're doing 50 uh, it's only 30 on this motorway you're breaking the speed limits and he says well that might be true to you but it's not true to me 
and he's convinced himself, of course, that in this 50, he's doing a 30. Sorry, in the 30, he's doing a 50. And he's he's having this ch- debate with this police officer saying, well, that might be true for you, but it's not true for me. It's like, it doesn't wash. There is a truth. One plus one equals tr- two. And there is a solid truth. And we need to know well, what is the truth? What is the character of the architect? You know, what scripture stands? What is the the true word of God? Because if they're all contradicting one another, well, what, what, what matters in doing the due diligence in that? And being led in the spirit, of course, um, is is what's necessary. And if we are led in the spirit, we will understand that the majority of these things that we're seeing on mainstream media are all Galatians 5 works of the flesh. You right. know, Paul tells us Galatians 5, for factions, rivalries, divisions, dissensions, these are all lusts of the flesh. And when we look at like factions and rivalries, and divisions and, and dissensions, when we look at them in the Greek, to to put it short, they're actually m- manufactured factions that have been uh, raised up by the devil. And the devil is basically playing both sides of the chessboard. He's playing the black piece and the white piece. And he's playing both sides. And for them that think they get caught in the crossfire, they have just become a victim to an emulated rivalry, something that has been forged by Hasatan himself. And we seen this early on with, let's say, COVID, for example. Was it a vax? Was it no vax? Was it a mask? Was it no mask? And it goes right down to Trump, Biden, Everton and Liverpool. <laughs> your football team, your postcode, your skin colour, your political persuasion. But really, bro, it all goes back to the, the prince of the power of the air who has been given all authority and all the kingdoms of the world are his, bar one, the kingdom of Yeshua, the kingdom of light, of course, which we occupy, and that's why we can discern these things, praise Yah. But he has all, all authority. Job says that all the world has been given unto the hand of the wicked one. So when when people are fussing and fighting over that, the devil's created schism and division and dissension, and the body of Christ have, have fallen out. But that is basically... Satan's tactic 101 to cause division and dissension. He caused division and dissension in the garden with Adam and Eve. You know, Adam blamed the woman. The woman got in trouble. And Adam blamed the woman. There was a division and a dissension straight in the beginning in the book of Genesis. All the way now, you know, right the way through from Jacob splitting his family, right the way through to the tribes and the, the, the civil wars that took place to the division of the northern and southern kingdom. All, all the way right up until now, today. And um, this is what all the Masonic and esoteric ruling orders learn about. Is in fact the Masonic logo is a set of dividers and a rule. Mm. It's a rule and a divider stick. If you check that out, and these are what these esoteric orders do. Who the champion f- for divisions and dissensions, and they use this weapon of the mainstream media and algorithms, and they push content. And when you, if you've been looking at, like for example, immigration and Tommy Robinson and the EDL. That's what your Twitter, your YouTube, your Instagram, your, your news feed is going to just feed you all that crap because they're manufacturing you mm. into another opposition. And then the, the devil's just having a field day. Whether it's Biden, whether it's Trump, did Trump get shot? Was it a hoax? And everyone's like, he did get shot. And it's like, no, he he, he, he had a, 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 a fake blood bag and he burst his ear and no no it was an act of god no it was the devil and it's just like while everyone's fussing and fighting over this there's just pure division taking place and that is the definition of a an emulated rivalry it's a campaign that's powered powered up and armed and uh, the devil's playing both sides of the chessboard and um, we have to be aware of these things because look at what's taking place in this country bro We've seen like loads of riots happen and things have took place and it's not good, of course, but they want division because then they can bring in, it's the totalitarian tiptoe. All right, now, well, you can't say things online. Okay, right, well, now we're going to create these new laws and legislations (coughs) that you're going to spend time in prison for cyber riots. And now they've just stripped away another right. And now it's like people um, can't gather and there's curfews and... uh, Again, 
it's it's more control and now it's facial recognition and these are all like precursors for the mark of the beast, bro. Mm-hmm. And whilst society and and the community are fighting over these things, the devil's just gaining ground and we're just moving closer. And the chances are people are just racking up a load of sin in themselves because you know they do have envies, they do have hatreds, they are backbiting. You know what does uh, Paul say? If you backbite against one another. Be aware that you will consume one another, mm. which is massive, you know. And we're just consuming each other, and that's just what the devil wants, man. Yeah, really well articulated. Uh, without being, you know, conspiratorial, that's just how the the red lodge and the blue lodge of reality set up, isn't yeah, it? Is the right, polarizing through different extreme views, and um, yeah, uh, causing that a uh, degree of separation and. Uh, mentioned this with Bex like we can expect that in the world and we, we know that this is Satan's show and he's doing doing his thing and there's distractions bread and circuses and all that um but I, as a body of Christ like surely we are to know better because I don't think we're um we're exonerated from these same principles and uh, you, you touched on there in Galatians with this this uh, sense of emulations and a uh, um, a setting up of uh, separation um, do you think these same principles have become more prevalent in the church in, in the sense that, you know, you can go online, you can get so many teachings and you can receive so much uh, opinion and uh, different interpretations of doctrine and um, people uh, within the body can become confused and, and then they are charged towards being right and um, uh, consuming one another for the sake of being right uh, as opposed to actually dwelling uh, peacefully and how iron is supposed to sharpen iron and uh, do it in a way that's actually edifying and unifying as opposed to, um, uh, yeah, just being right and then being isolated for the sake of that. It's like the the enemy's got you right where he wants you if, if you're uh, willing to um, negate uh, fellowship for the sake of, of, of being right how how have you seen these cultural impacts actually infiltrate in the in the church yeah i, I see it a lot on people bro and it's like a, it's like satan's just threw a dark gloomy blanket over them and the walk around they still think they know which way they're going and that's just a sad thing because the worst type of being lost is to be lost and not know that you're lost it's to it's to be in darkness and not know that you're in darkness and um I think the Bible prol- prolifically warns us about these things over and over. That the heart is deceitful above all things. If any man think he knows something, he knows nothing. You know, where do we even begin with that? So I think humility um, is a great antidote and being humble in these things. Uh, but I would say one of the biggest infiltrations <coughs> that I have seen... Um, it's 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 got to be like YouTube, man. And the irony is, we're filming this. It's going out on YouTube, but uh, hypocrites. <laughs> well, look, you know, it, it can, and it's how it's used. And um, you know, you, YouTube, bro, it's 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 becoming like the modern day cup of divination. It's becoming like this crystal ball. You know, p- people have set themselves up, and they're. YouTube is their ministry that they attend. Right. It's their pastor. It's their counselor. It's their um, it's their accountability. And people watch something online, and they and they think that oh, I've had this real revelation from mm. God. This is a real revelation, and and no, it's not. You've just been you've just been hit with an algorithm, which is a basically a borderline artificial intelligence, which we know is demonic. And that YouTube knows your preference, knows your heart better than you know yourself. I mean, or this, these algorithms, they know you better than your private inner circle know you. Think about it. Think about them things that come through on your stream through that algorithm. And as you're just surfing online, uh, the enemy's coming with, 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 some, with some real heavy gear to pull you off the path. And, you know, I've seen YouTube take people out the game bro mm. and and of course god is using it and allowing these things to come into people's reality to test their hearts um but it it can be deadly man it can be deadly 
and, I, and I'll give you an example of this, like people will watch something and they think that they've had this revelation, but the, the hearing the voice of, of YouTube more than the actually hearing the, the, voice, the divine voice of Yah, and they think that they're being led and uh, there's a revelation from God when it's not. It's, it's, it's this, this algorithm has been sent to you to your preference and it's probably definitely got a, sp- a spiritual force behind it and it's not Yah. You know, think about YouTube. It's all about you. It's centered about around you. And when we think about a tube, you might think of like a uh, like a cylinder or a or a pole or some type of c- cylindrical po- pole of material. But a tube, in this sense, is like it's it's a tube like a, a cannula, bro. Like a tube can also be a term in the medical industry for a feed or a drip. Some people are getting fed this drip or from an algorithm of content and, and they, they really think that it's from the Lord and it's really just not, you know, and it's a, it's a big trap, and mate. What's your thoughts on that? I think um, even just in the that word, the ch- uh, tube, uh, it just evokes the the kind of original slang for television was the tube. We're going to watch the tube. And, wow, yeah. Um, a- again, to... To think that the same principles of propaganda and brainwashing aren't prevalent, uh, aren't still prevalent as it was back in the day through the television would be like naive, like so naive. Um, I, 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 when you said about the, um, the, the, the YouTube and just uh, receiving all of this revelation and uh, whether it be like uh, truth, whether it be revealing or the secrets, or whatever it is. Like the actual reality is, is just you're just sat on in front of a screen, just like, and you think you're conquering the world and and like doing all these amazing things, but the reality is you're literally sat on your bum watching the screen. Like it's so much of the Torah, uh, I I think it has to be walked out. Um, You can have all of the revelations, all of the teachings, all of the doctrines, all of the amazing, and these all have their place in moderation, but. Um, spiritual indigestion can actually just make you just, um, I, I, and I, I, I like this word, retarded, because you end up going backwards. You're not Jeez. actually moving forward. You're just like stuck. And that's where it, it gets really frustrating in terms of, um, it's amazing how um, people get served and people who are isolated, people who, who need, um, you know, uh, teachings and all of these things. We know all about that. But if, if if you've got that already, like, you need to, like, check yourself. And I, I always think about, like, without the internet, like, way back in the day, you'd have your parish, right? You'd have your church. You'd go down to your single church. You'd hear your teacher preach the word, and then you'd go and live your life. Like, you didn't have 10 different teachings. You didn't have all of these things um, to to confuse or... You, you had like a, a, a walking faith where you're living a, a real life, dealing with people around you consistently and being loyal and steadfast to the flock that you're with and a part of. And it just, for me, it just seems a bit more real. Uh, whereas now it, it seems to be too easy just to, um, like you say, be your own ministry. And um, I, I don't think that's the way God intended it. No, I mean, you know, exactly, bro. It's you. YouTube, it's all about you and all you are doing is just sitting in your bed on your phone, on your bum, <laughs> looking at a screen with your thumb and you then you're like, Whoa, I've had an epiphany, I've had yeah. a divine download and, from and the I, Holy Spirit. I've got to say, I'd I do in my flesh loves that. I'm not saying I'm better or I don't I don't crave to do that. I'll happily sit there and hammer YouTube for hours watching people on the world's biggest slip and slide you know jumping off stuff like just stupid stuff and i'm like what i've just lost an hour that i could have been living life or even studying the word um so I, when i say these things I, i'm not having to go like i i'm definitely just as prone to watching um it, again it may not necessarily be like sinful like you know um overtly sinful you know no, there's no violence there's no sex but are you wasting time yars time that is given you are you like um, comparing y- your life? Are you um, lusting after things that you don't have in your life on the low without even realizing? Are you breeding discontent in your life because you're taking in all of this 
this gear that may not even seem overtly sinful. So that's that's the real like danger I find a lot of the time. It's danger, mate. It's proper danger. It's danger. Most needs red tape round it. <laughs> needs red tape round it. But it, look, bro, you know you can have pleasure and and th- you can do things recreationally. Right. The the danger is though when it's spirituality. When okay. you're basing your spirituality around that YouTube screen or around your laptop, and like people sitting there and are looking at a screen for hours and hours, and then you think, oh yeah, wow, oh I've been given this super download from the Holy Spirit. Oh wow, and now I've I've really like. I've been given this great knowledge and this depth of understanding and I've I've been distilled and infused with all this wisdom from above and it's not me, it's an artificial intelligence and algorithm has pushed something your way. Chances are it's the enemy, the prince of the power of the air who's live, you know? Right. He's live, mate. Right. And when we look at the the you know, the makeup of these angelic beings that are, that are electromagnetic entities, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to go too, too, de- too much deep into this now, of course, but this is what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with electromagnetic entities. And, the, you know, the, the, the prince of the power of the air, he comes through on wave. It's a broadcast, you know, and we have to just be really careful because I've seen people study the way out of this fellowship because of a YouTube video. I've seen them isolate themselves because of something they believe that God's given them on a YouTube video and it's 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 madness bro but yeah God does allow these things to happen and he does have a plan and a purpose in it of course he sifts of course he's uh, allowing delusions to fall upon people to test their heart of course he's um, he's testing people and trying people so th- there is definitely purpose behind it but uh, my my only concern is uh, how much of it we allow to block us from the real voice of Yah. You know, there's there's a, there's there's people in our fellowship who, for example, there's one guy who who heard the voice of God just speak to him about teruma. He didn't even know what it was, teruma, 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 and he actually joined the fellowship at the time of trumpets at the at the time of, you know, Yom Teruah, and he's like blew away and God had just been speaking this word to him for ages but you, you know you got to disconnect from the, the, the digital realm to, to be in order to be able to hear correctly like because none of the ancestors or the forefathers were, were shining into YouTube <laughs> to speak to God put it that way yeah I I, I completely agree and um, quite often we can say I, I, I don't really you know I'm not really hearing from God and doesn't really speak to me as he once did and it's like well let's let's have a look at your your actual inputs and outputs like realistically and um i think it it it's easy to forget how exciting it is when yah does talk to you in real real life uh like you say when the word does become alive where it can be a, a repetition of a scripture it can be um it can be a nod or a prod by somebody that you meet it can be uh, so many things um, but there's there's such a comfort in that beta state of being sat down and looking at the screen and um, you know I, I'm all for being studious I, I really am and I think there is a time and a place and moderation is definitely needed but um, yeah it's it's all to appease the flesh it's all to bring your flesh in but um, really to I think really to discern the voice of your eyes. It's it's feeding the spirit man, isn't it? It's feeding the inner man as much as possible, prayer, fasting, and uh, and the word, which is all hard work, and it's all um, uh, in complete opposition to our flesh. It's not glamorous. It's not particularly supernatural in its um, execution. Yeah, it's hard work, and it's it's the antithesis of what our flesh wants to do. But when you do get into that, it's um. It starts popping off, and you know, quite often I always think like when um, people talk about our fellowship in the sense that like, oh wow, you know, we we met through you know one one nine ministries or like, oh yeah, and that popped up on my YouTube, and yeah, I saw Joe's teaching, and then I I went on the com, and like that's cool, like completely legit. I see the logistics of that at play, but God could have brought all of us together in any way He saw fit. Without the internet, without YouTube, without the cameras, without anything, he could, he all he he does make that happen. So it will be interesting to see in these coming days 
whether it's through censorship, whether it's through some sort of blackout, whether it's through, uh, you know, not being able to use these technologies for whatever reason. Yeah. How you are will move with, within the body, you know? Yeah, definitely, man. And uh, look, God can use it, bro, and I'm not saying that. So if you're sitting here going, oh, gosh, this is all I've got. Well, bless you, you know, because God can use it. Um, we're just putting you on notice and just say, look, put put that guard up, guard up you know. For example, like, um, I'm not saying that it can't be authentic either, but because there's people who've, who've found us online and uh, the the technology and maybe YouTube or whatever, and as we always say, the the net is 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 the internet, a net that's caught you, or are you using the net to catch the mm. fish? You know, we're called to be fishers of men. But me, you, Tom, Jack, we we didn't we didn't meet online. I met you and I was affiliated to you physically. Same with Jack, same with Tommy. So God did bring us together in that way. And I'm not trying to boast there, but though there may have been digital um, connections from people who it we st- It still took action, right? It still took like a, you know, stepping out and a, a physical yeah. um, result in terms of, and that, that's the point I was trying to make with regards to the Torah being active in your life. It's like, cool, like if, you, if you're if you in a position where you've connected with a ministry or there's teachers or, you know, like, go, go, like, yeah, yeah. And, and and let the organic relationships then occur because we, we can attest to the fruit of that. Oh, man. And look, and another thing is like, you can do without and fast on these things. So, you know, I I stay up to date with things in the world and then if I find myself I'm waking up in the morning and the first thing I always do is try and give the first fruit to me my day, the the words of my mouth, as David says, I will bless you with the words of my mouth and I will look up. I, I I try and make that my priority always without fail, to bless Yah with the first words of my of my mouth that day. But then if you check your phone because you know you're going to work or you need to see what time it is. And then before you know it, you, you, you're clicking on, you know, a news report. You know, th- the devil wants to give you the bad news. Mm. Always, bro. And we're the good news. And a lot of the time, it's not good news. You know, it's this bomb's gone off or this bridge in Ukraine's been destroyed or this oil field spilled, or this oil tank has spilled or Hezbollah or the uh, IDF or the, the Yemenites or this or that or the... Big tech billionaires, yachts has just sank in the Sicilian Ocean because of a tornado that's never happened before. And it just goes on and on and on and on with bad, bad news. But we're the good news and it's not the gospel. You're getting up and you're not reading the gospel. You're getting up and you're reading the bad news of of the fallen world. Right. And there's there's nothing you can do. And you just start becoming the bad news. Do you reckon there's like a threshold for the amount of information like we should actually be receiving like naturally you know like are we meant to be able to know what's going on in australia and and everywhere else in the world at any given time like i feel that even feels because what can you do with all of these things that are taking place i think it's just designed to just jam your head in mate <laughs> it's just designed to jam your head in and and like through it you're getting advertisements you're getting borderline soft porn you're getting like cover girls or you're scrolling through a Twitter and it's like they're not just giving you the bad news they're just scrambling your head with yeah, like yeah 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 uh, advertisements consumerism soft porn it's just mad it's just a huge information overload and this can stop people from being the gospel because we're not called to preach the gospel we're called to be the gospel bro mm. as you always say we don't just speak the gospel we are the gospel we are the good news we walk out the gospel every single day. But if you're getting up and you're starting your day with the BBC News report or Fox News or Sky or whatever, and you're not in the good news and you're in the worldly ma- news of the Matrix, forget it, mate. Your day's gone, you know. So we have to be on guard about them things as well. Yeah, and that's um, it's actually quite convicting. My, my morning routine is literally up um, Bible, coffee, and then I'll scroll through, and I I kind of justify it by like, oh, there might be a story or something I can use for the podcast. So that's always my I kind of, but I think there is there's definitely a limit because um, 
like you say, what's it actually doing for your for your um uh, your countenance that day? Like, are you going out with joy, or are you anticipating? Um, and again, the, the thing is, all of these things we, is so obviously by design, right? Yeah. Like all of these um, yeah. companies, news uh, s- stations, uh, you know, it's it all goes back to, um, you know, your, your Black Rock Vanguard, top of the pyramid type stuff. And it's like, these aren't good people running these networks. They aren't wanting to um, uh, fill you with happiness and peace and joy. They're wanting quite the opposite. So again, we have to be careful with, um, how we monitor those things in in our walks? Yeah, definitely, man. Because I think you know it can block you. It can block you from your reception. It can block you from tuning into the the frequency up on high. It can lower your vibration. It can do things to you, bro. It's uh, sensory overload of the negative t- type, and the enemy's trying to captivate and again divide divide you and cause a schism in you and from you from getting into the presence. Um, so what with that? Without trying to be um, too critical, I mean, it's good to, to have a look at things um, and analyse them, but what do you think good looks like in, in terms of uh, somebody's walk? And I know we've, we've spoken about this in similar lines before, but um, what, is it, what does good look like when you're, when you're hearing Yar's voice, when you're actually in communion and uh, in good, good standing and relations We've spoken a lot about like things you shouldn't do, but like what what what's fruitful? Do you reckon? Well, loving the unlovable, you know, serving. The quickest way for me to access the presence of God is to to love someone who doesn't deserve it. It's to give to someone who hasn't got. It's to provide for someone with no provision. It's to um, it's to encourage people. You know, it's. It's to, to press in and speak life. I, y- y- you'll hear from the Spirit, this person, uh, you need to reach out to them so you can mm. use technology and just that, that phone right. call, you know, that 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 signature bar of chocolate, that signature present, that signature hug or knock on the door or just a moment in time. It doesn't need to be like spend the day or spend all my money. It can just be something really gentle. You know, a really soft, soft spoken word, just an active being an active listener. Because there's so many people who are so quiet and they hold all this stuff inside and they need someone to talk to. So I think when we start serving others and, and providing and, and being Abrahamic and being like Yeshua, I think that then can bring a real cleansing in the conscience in us and it, it just grows fruit and that's when the spirit of joy is upon you and you know Life, life is restored because, you know, there's people there, bro, who, who, who haven't got who haven't got a pot to wee and like, and the they've just got this jovial, jubilant joy that just pours out of them, mate, and it's contagious, you know, and they're so inspirational, you know, they're so inspirational, but they may be in poverty, mm-hmm. and um, that's sensational. That they're the type of people that you want to be around, you know, because these are the people that will actively inspire you and they are the change that we do want to see in the world and we want to be them people too and we do that by drinking at the well the well of living water uh, which wells up to eternal life and it pours out bro and it's non-stop it's infinite you know and the more we pour into others the more he pours into us from on high hallelujah and yeah i've seen that for myself me and alex we did a um uh, we were working in in Liverpool, and we went to a family's home, and uh, they had a problem with mold in in the in the house, and it was bad, bro. Like it was it was bad, and we were basically putting some air vents into the house to get some circulation going and stuff, and it was horrendous. But my goodness, the this family was so sweet and so giving. Um, they, I think they were Catholics. They had their little jesus shrine in the corner and stuff but they were believers right irrespective of denomination but there was like a joy i was like wow like look at the look at your surroundings look at your environment but yet like it was just real humbling bro to be like wow that's that's amazing um so i I think that is the goal is to you know what paul says about um being content in all things and um 
just on that note of um, what it's like to to feel the spirit in your day to day, like I think when you're responding to those nudges in, you know, I'll give that person a call or when you're in the, sh when you're in the shop, say to the cashier, like, I really respect how good you are at your job. Like say those things yeah. that come in yeah. and, and, and when you, when you're um, more in the spirit, those things become so much easier. Shema Yisrael. Shema, Shema Yisrael. Whereas um, quite often when you're in the flesh and you're in your own little uh, pocket, you don't pay those compliments. You don't act on those things that come in your way. But and that is the spirit, right? The the messengers are, are, are prodding you. Like this can make the difference uh, yeah. to to somebody's day and life. And and you're not responding to it. You're missing all these things. So it's very easy to to look at our walks and go. Do you know what? Yeah, I've been a good boy this week. I went to Shabbat and uh, yeah, I went to work and uh, I was good. But if you are had to show you the roll call of the things that you miss because you you just weren't yeah. uh, responsive. It would be pretty shameful. Sins of omission. It's it's about mm. what we're not doing. Oh, I've watched me song and I haven't swore in a long time. Well, have you encouraged someone? Have you spoke life? Have you been speaking honeycomb into people? Or what? You know, look, Yeshua, he, multiple times in the gospel accounts, he met with people for minutes, moments. And just that, them couple of minutes with some people, that was a divine encounter so much so it radically changed them forever for the rest of their life. And he's gone, you know, mm. he's gone. And for all we know, they never met again. We know his ministry was short. So he just has these moments with people, just minutes, often minutes, the Samaritan woman at the well, um, Legion, just minutes, the blind man, minutes, the leper, minutes, and radically, radically changes them for the rest of their life. And we can do the same. Because yeah. Christ is in us. And, and what is that boldness? And I know you wouldn't take um, any sort of like claim to this, um, but I've seen you do it a lot. And I think anybody who knows you will attest to it. And, and you know, we can talk about um, the office of evangelism and whatnot, but I think it's it's different. Where I've seen the way you operate in public, um, you, you'll just engage and and talk to people because you, you seem to just have this way with people. What... Um, what is it apart about? Is it your personality? Is it your upbringing? Is it um, how you hold certain scriptures that that gives you that boldness? Because it does take a, you know, take a gulp and then I'm gonna go in there. But you seem to like do it and practice it to the point where you're just like, I guess, uh, a lack of a, a fear of man, uh, perhaps. Yeah, there's a, there's a lack of fear of man, and I think that does come through intimacy with God. So you, you, the more you know God, the more you see how inferior and sovereign he is and how inferior we are and we're just a created thing, a creature. And then therefore, I, I'm actually in more fear of this person uh, being, being completely obliterated spiritually and consciously. So I have no fear in approaching you to tell you the good news about the Saviour hmm. because your life may depend upon it, just like... You know, you would be quick to grab someone from walking into a fire or quick to grab a child running out into the road uh, on, a, on a carriageway with cars. But I would say, yeah, you know, because I do think that ministerially, the gifting of evangelism, some evangelists, of course, so I understand it's not for everyone, but we can still move in prophetic gifts that do witness to people in other ways. It may not necessarily be a being a winner of souls or coming with a, a doctrine or a theology or words. But um, what I would say is uh, being all things to all people. Mm. Paul says, to the Jew I became a Jew, to the Gentile I became a Gentile, so as to win more to Christ. And uh, I think that has probably always been um, you know, uh, where I where I begin in evangelism. You know, Paul. I was actually just looking at it the other the other day in the Book of Acts. He's 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 entitled. He goes by about five, maybe even six different titles. He's called the leader of a sect. He's called a Nazarene. He's called a Roman. He's called a Pharisee. He's called a Jew. He's called loads, bro. <laughs> Identity yeah. Crisis, yeah. <laughs> but he just floats with all of them, bro. Yeah. He floats with all of them. So I can float like a Christian, bro, 
if I'm going to be winning Christians to the Torah. And, you know, I worked for a Jew not long ago. And I felt like I've been preparing my entire walk to meet this man. And he was blue. His head was blew off. And in fact, he was an Orthodox teacher. He was like a rabbi, bro. And I got a, I got 25 minutes after doing a job for him. I got 25 minutes in the office with him. I couldn't believe he'd allowed me to sit down. And everything that I'd prepared for, week in, week out, every Shabbat, I'd led up to this moment. And this mm. guy was just like, it just melted him, bro. He didn't know which way to look. I had to apologize because he was like so socially awkward about what he was getting told about Mashiach ben Yosef, about the suffering servants, about the leper, the leper king, everything from Isaiah 53 to Zephaniah to Zechariah to the new covenant. It's just his head just blew off. I didn't even touch the Brit Hadashah. We just added out in the Torah and in the prophets. And in that moment, I was a Jew to him. Mm. I was a Jew, and he actually seen me with my ZTs on. It's the reason why he employed me. He thought I was one like a Jew. <laughs> and then when we got the job, we told him we were messianic, and he was like, so what, do you do for Jesus? <laughs> 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 and then Tommy come in, and uh, <laughs> Tommy started speaking Hebrew, and I was like, it's another one of the messianics, another one of the God squad. Just Bible all day. He started quizzing us about the Passover. He'd walk away and be like... <laughs> And he'd come back late and he wanted to have it out again and it was class, mate. But when I sat in that office, bro, I was a Jew to him, you know. I just became a Jew in that moment. And, uh, you know, I told him. I told him about the Messiah and that he was returning and lowly on a donkey. Um, my man's head was just blue. Um, and we used we used all the prophetic uh scriptures in the Ketuvim to, 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 to prove that to him so much so yeah I had to apologise I said look I've got to let you go here because I can see you you know <laughs> I love that and it, again it's just the beauty of um, you know how um, like you said to live the gospel um, because you don't know when that opportunity is going to arise and when you are in the spirit um, you may be a bit more bolder you may be a bit more eloquent in how you deliver these things and it might well be more received because Yars actually put you in that place at yeah. the right time yeah um there was a, a notion I came across recently I was reading in the book and it was about how within the within the uh, field as it were you know not everybody's called to be uh of the harvest to to you know to reap you know that the, the world really needs a lot of gardeners those that you know prepare the soil those that plant the seeds and we can often devalue our our walks by forgetting that we are um a, a gardener and there is so much uh, joy and um uh yeah uh, a lot of great stuff to be had as uh, as a mere gardener as it were and so i would just encourage people that no matter how uh, trivial um, how far off you think you are from ministry and and from doing kingdom work, the the kingdom is 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 in is in you. It's Hallelujah. wherever you are, where, wherever your environment is in. I'm not talking about some mad esoteric new age stuff. I'm talking about how you're conducting yourself, how you do all things unto the glory of God. And then before you know it, um, there is the kingdom in 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 everything. And, um, you know, I often say like this, this life, this world is supernatural. The, 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 everything that we're doing is pertaining to the kingdom. Everything we do should be a, a witness unto, unto Yeshua. And I think when you're keyed into that, um, you become bolder, you become uh, more forthright. And Yah will start using you a, a, a fr a more frequently in a way that you just feel alive. And all these things are, are coming together because you're in the word, you're in the spirit. And your life becomes so much more fulfilling. You're not just sat behind that screen wondering what it's like to, to do kingdom work. It's like you're, you're in there. You're in the thick of the action. So I just encourage people who think that even when they're not really doing kingdom work, they, they it never stops. Amen. Amen. I think that, that leads to a, a, a great point as well that I, I want to speak about is, you know, if you want to get out there and do that, that's great, of course, and praise Yah. It is the Great Commission, and it is a necessity. You know, of course, it's uh, non-negotiable. But another another key ingredient to that that I, that I would um, 
counsel people and advise people with is you've got to get yourself an armor bearer. Mm. You know, Yeshua sent them out in twos. On the account of two or three witnesses as a matter established, um, we understand uh, judicially um, we needed credible witnesses and where two or more are gathered, he is in the midst. And if we look at First Samuel, uh, the armor bearer of Jonathan, I think... Uh, Praise yeah. Yeah, th- this is beautiful. I've just got it up. It's First Samuel 14, verse 6. And of course, uh, we, we know the background to this. Jonathan is going to a Philistine garrison, so they're uncircumcised, okay? There's a, there's a spiritual war. There's a stronghold. So they're going to go and take this stronghold on, but he needs his armor bearer to do it. And listen to what he says in verse 6. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving uh, from saving by many or by few. Now that is that right there, from saving by many or by few, in verse 6, is 100% a, a type and shadow of the uncircumcised, the Gentiles who were stuck in a stronghold. Let us go over in spiritual power and might with the armor of God and stand mm. fast because uh, nothing can restrain the Lord from saving many or few mm. and saving them to Yeshua, Yah's salvation, his deliverance. And so the armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to what is in your heart. And what did they do? They go over and cross over together and the armor bearer is with him in that. And you need to have, you know, a champion of confidence that is going to assist you in this, to do this walk. And praise Yah, I have the privilege of yourself, of Jack, of Tommy. And I think that this is where our success has been because, you know, um, a chord of three is not easily broken. Praise Yah for that. The unification of Psalm 133, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell in unity. Uh, you know, to sharpen the spiritual sword, for iron sharpens iron, so too a brother sharpens his brother. You know, these are all real necessities, foundational, if you want to embark on in ministry, especially, you know, evangelizing. And I think that you need someone that is going to stand with you on the offensive and say, I know that what, what the Lord has put in your heart is righteous, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bear you up. I I'm gonna be loyal in in this cause, and, and I'm gonna stand with you. And I'm gonna fight this. Um, these uncircumcised, these strongholds, we can take it down together. And if people are to be saved by the Lord, praise Yah. I'm confident in it. I think that um, beautifully surmises why we. Uh, advocate and uh, champion that notion of being active in your faith. Um, we love the fact that people are, are tuning in. We love the fact that um, you know many people are being reached, not just through this ministry, but all across the world. Um, but I think that that is a, a, a an amazing example of of what we're called to do and who who we're called to be and how we're meant to do that as a as a unit not as individuals and yeah. um yeah yeah and i'm sure you would you would advocate that you know a time of isolation or a time of learning or being studious or you know all those things but ultimately it's about communion with with uh with your brothers and sisters yeah praise yeah man and, and look we can fall into that role so the armor bearer curiously mysteriously enigmatically <laughs> he's not named bro the armor right. bearer is not named Jonathan's named, the armor bearer is never named. Okay, so what's that telling us? That I can be an armor bearer for you uh, and you can be an armor bearer for someone else because it's the spirit of God that's actually moving through that person in that moment. You know, you're in the trenches, but I'm here and I'm supporting you. You're in the field, I'm here and I'm supporting you, you know. It's a fluid um, it's a fluid capacity, can. isn't it, of, um, yeah, uh, of, of a role. And we would all be knackered. I, you know, at, at my wedding re- uh, recently, uh, I had to uh, give my speech um, prior to Joe absolutely roasting me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes. I didn't write anything. And um, it was because I knew that the essence of it was going to be about how I was the sum of all parts. Like through, through so m- many um, stages of my life, uh, particularly within the last uh, seven years on this walk, like I'm literally only as good as the people around me. 
and uh, praise Yah, the fruit that comes from what I do is is literally because of the encouragement and the accountability and the things that um, have helped shape me. Um, obviously, via uh, you know through the Spirit, but I'm just only as good as those around me, and um, uh, I praise God for that because um, I've seen it tangibly in my own life and in in the lives of, of people uh, in and around our, our our fellowship. So it's it's vital. It's absolutely vital. Yeah, man. And the armor bearer, bro. Like, listen, they can they, they can be more c- courageous than the actual leader. Some may say. Yeah, Jonathan went up first, but he he, he went up in, on it with his hands and feet. The armor bearer went up, bearing the armor behind him. Right, and the armor bearer can be more courageous, more radical, because that's your brethren standing behind you. One of the brother, yeah, the brother, yeah. <laughs> one of the brother brethren standing behind you with the armor of God on, helping you pull down strongholds, helping you challenged, challenge, challenge uh, uh, these. St- strange areas or even win souls unto the lord uh with the uncircumcised so th- these are foundations for destroying strongholds you've got to get yourself an armor bearer because it's, it's purely a, a role of servitude right yeah it's a role of servitude brother of course and it's a very a humbling role of servitude because people always want to pioneer and lead but not everyone is in that office but i would like to think that i would be the unnamed armor bearer for you in an aspect, maybe even doing this, you know, you've got a ministry here doing this and like, yeah, I want I want you to have that platform where you've got the content coming on and we're speaking about good stuff. I want to support you in that, bro, you know, so it may be in that area or it could just be in council or no, just even being your best man at yeah, your yeah. wedding, bro, whatever it may be. No, I, I think it is, it's within our... Um Within our, I guess our, not even our egos, but we all kind of want to be the hero. We all want to be the the David, and we all want to be the, the the guy that's slaying the giant. But as you said, it takes a lot of logistics. It takes a lot of uh, unknown things behind the scenes to to you know uh, to to get you uh, where you are. Whether it's in marriage, whether it's in relationships with your brothers and sisters, um, is such a is such a um, everybody can be an armor bearer for everybody else at some point but again it comes back to that thing physical proximity building relationships sanctification through unions of of uh, of fellowship you you can't you cannot your your flipping iphone is not your armor bearer nah, mate. no it's not your cavalry it's not no way <laughs> don't be looking at wikipedia to like <laughs> galvanize your cause get on your ar- armor bearer who's anointed with loyalty encouragement exhortation yes i love that don't go and ask siri siri <laughs> is not your armor bearer bro listen we, we need, you need to get yourself an armor bearer and there's nothing better i i love being in that role rock in with the cavalry and just give one of the brother the backup that they need, saturate them in prayer, turn up with the armour of God and say, what's in your heart? I'm supporting you in this because I know that you have a heart of flesh and that the Lord has written what he wants to do with you on your heart and I'm going to support you in that cause. So get yourself an armour bearer, man. And if you haven't got one, why don't you be an armour bearer for someone? It's a fantastic military office to be in, you get me? It's a fantastic military office to be in. There you go. Put down your iPads. Pick up the shield of faith. Get active on the battlefield. Basically, <laughs> I think that's the that's the message. Um, Smash them Philistine, you know, posts, mate, and get yourself some comrades of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. I love you. No, it's it's what it's all about. And um, yeah, any other um, final thoughts or reflections before we depart? Uh, just to bless everyone and thank everyone for tuning in this long and we hope that it's blessed you and we hope that we were the good news for you this this evening that we spoke life and encouraged you and and set you up and put a bit of wind in your sail there because it's gloomy days mate and uh, you know we've got so much things to look forward to and the days ahead of us are not all gloom um, they're not all gloom and doom um where we're going is paradise and we're going to meet Yeshua very soon. So that's super exciting. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Um, thanks again, Joe. Bless you, man. Um, so I think I could speak for a lot of us here at Almond House, whereby if you were to no longer watch us, if you were no longer to, to join us on YouTube and you ditched us, 
for the the sake of actually walking out your faith that you didn't need us anymore because you've found a congregation or you've grown and you've you've uh, had fellowship elsewhere then praise Yah. I'd say, do you know what? Stop watching the upper room and get active out there. And uh, I'd be so happy. I'd be so privileged um, to do that. So, yeah, guys, I, I hope that this has been uh, fruitful. I hope this has uh, helped and encouraged you. Uh, again, as ever, get involved with the comments. Um, and it's always appreciated to interact with people out there. Um, that's if you're not too busy living your life because that would be most uh, most ideal. Um, but uh, again, thank you, Joe. This has been uh, The Upper Room. From our house to yours, uh, shalom. God bless. We love you. Take care. Shalom, shalom. Thanks, Daz.